Since 2010, we've had the iPad. Now, two years later, 2012, it seems probable, at least according to a lot of people, that we're going to have an iPad mini. And I just wanted to make this video to weigh in and throw my thoughts out there about what I feel about Apple potentially making an iPad mini and are they actually going to. At this point, I don't think I've read any actual concrete uh, facts that Apple is indeed producing a smaller screened iPad. The current one's about 10 inches. Rumor has it that the smaller one could be, I think they're saying, 7 or 8 inches, which isn't all that much smaller. It looks like, uh, at least from the photos that have been leaked or made in Photoshop, uh, that the actual bezel on the display goes down from its 3 quarters of an inch or an inch size that it is now to something a lot smaller. And that Apple may be wanting to go after the Kindle a little bit more and smaller tablet-esque devices that are more portable than an iPad. And since day one, ever since I've heard about an iPad mini, I don't know, a year ago, quite a while ago, about Apple making another iPad, I just went back to the thought and the image that I saw that Apple posted when they had the iPad keynote, when Steve Jobs sat up there on stage and played with an iPad on the couch. And uh, if you don't remember, we were all talking about what are they going to call it, the iPad or tablet or, I don't know, there were other names that we talked about uh, in the rumor mill. But I remember them putting a MacBook Pro or possibly a MacBook Air on the right side of a PowerPoint slide or keynote slide. And on the left side, they had an iPhone. And then they moved them apart and they said there's something there in the middle. And they put an iPad in there. And I do not see that iPad shifting right and making room for another iPad, another device that would run iOS, another device they would have to try to sell you in comparison with, say, an iPod Touch, an iPhone, a MacBook or Pro or Air, as well as the original 10-inch iPad. If you even just think about pricing, I found this article here from uh, CNET, actually, about what they would charge for a small iPad. $299 would be fair, but that's the price of an iPod Touch. So why would you buy an iPad over an iPod Touch or an iPod Touch over an iPad? So then you go to $399. Well, that's quite a lot of money. That's more than a Kindle. And it's only $100 less than the baseline regular iPad, what they still call the new iPad, which I always thought was a stupid name. And I just don't see it happening. I don't see the niche in the market. I do not see the functionality. And if they did, assuming that they would, um, picture uh, the, the, the difficulty a consumer would have between, already people don't know what to buy between an iPod Touch, an iPhone, a Mac, or an iPad. I get tons of questions and comments on my channel. Should I buy for college a MacBook Pro, a MacBook Air, or an iPad? And for everybody, it's different. And Apple right now has the luxury of saying that they could make the strong point and argument that all three is the perfect way to go. And that's what they've done with me. They have sold me on a MacBook Pro, an iPad 3, as well as an iPhone 5, and currently an iPhone 4S. And all of those three devices, I feel, have their very strong place in the market. You need a phone. You need something that fits in your pocket that has everything on it and a camera, and it needs to fit in your pocket. The Mac, that's important too. You make videos on it. You multitask. You play games. You do emails. You do photos. You have a big keyboard. You do design. The iPad is a perfect happy medium of sitting down on the couch and just reading some news articles or watching some YouTube videos. It's perfect for photos. It sucks as a camera. Have you ever seen anybody walking around? Actually, at the Glenmore Gathering, big car show in Ohio, I saw some kid walking around with an iPad taking video. And I only thought, how bad does that video quality look? You're walking around on a golf course lawn holding a slate up to your face. That's the other name, I slate. Uh, trying to take video of these million dollar cars. And I don't see the niche that they would be able to make the point that all consumers or power consumers, enthusiast consumers like myself, would need both sized iPads. So it's kind of going to split the customers in between both iPads, which I do not feel is their goal. And it would cost them more in R&D to produce a whole other product and market it and try to sell it. I just don't see it happening. Long story short, I know it's too late for that. I don't think it's productive for Apple. I don't think it's productive for the consumers. If you disagree with me, Leave me some thoughts down below. Would you want one? What would you be willing to pay for one? And what functionality increase or usability increase does it offer over the regular iPad? Sure, it will be cheaper a little bit, yes. Will it be easier to carry around? Debatably, it's smaller. It could potentially be thinner, I don't know. But when have you been carrying an iPad and thought, this thing is too big and heavy, I want something smaller? That's never happened with me. If it has with you, leave me those thoughts and comments below. I do look forward to reading those, and I will talk to you guys later this week. I know I said yesterday or today or whenever I get around to uploading this video, 
that I wouldn't talk to you before the iPhone 5. Well, I lied. I'm feeling productive. I'm making videos. Leave me some comments. Leave me some requests. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.